What's up everyone, my name is Pi and welcome to SR Lounge where we're here to give you shooters training by shooters for shooters and we have two very special guests here, Jeff and Lori. This is actually episode two. Yes. Episode one we just filmed. That one was on three tips as far as pricing strategies go for wedding photographers. It's a fantastic video. These two have an amazing process set up and if you haven't seen that video, you need to go back and check it out. Now, for those of you that are going to be going to Shutterfest, these two are also teaching and we're gonna talk about that later, but we'll have links as well. Now in this video, we are talking about album sales, right? You guys have yes. three tips when it comes to album sales. We have three of everything because three is just the magic number. It is the magic number. So let's start with tip number one. Okay, Lori. All right, so tip number one is we start our album with a small set number of pages. So there are a lot of strategies when it comes to album design. Some people say, pick all your images and give them to me. Some people pre-design the album and ask their clients to buy extra pages. Um, we start all of our albums at 15 spreads, which is 30 pages, and then we go up from there. Um, mm -hmm. But that's tip number one, is have, a, have a, a set number where you start and let your clients know that that is what it starts at. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of, I know that, we actually tried this too. You guys mentioned that Jerry Guionis does this. I think I got the tip from him too, like six yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. It's design large albums and then, you know, kind of sell it in a way that you don't, you know, that yeah. they don't cut cut things out, right? And, and Go ahead. No, no, no. I was, I, was, I was thinking like, it, it didn't go well with our clients. Like, for the most part, people would be surprised that, oh, if I only have a $2,000 album included, why did you guys just design me a $5,000 album. Yeah. Right. And we love Jerry. We've actually taken his workshop. This is kind of where our album design process started is we started with that as well. And I think just depending on who your client is and what market you're in, that may or may not work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or your our, voice or your sexy semi beard. Yeah. Or, right. You know. Yeah. I, th I think if you can, um, <laughs> if you can use the word gorgeous and darling a lot, it helps, but I just, I don't, I don't, yeah. I'm not and that's no good. slide on Jerry. We no, love no, no, Jerry. Jerry's and, a uh, great friend and, and he has an amazing yeah. presentation like he just his charisma like when he sells it like like he could be selling I, me a I would buy it I would buy it I would buy anything you're yeah. selling <laughs> yeah I mean I, I've bought Ice Society I've bought yeah. it all you know um, but I walk by the booth by the way I walk by the booth at JPBI <laughs> and then he had his new book I'm like I'll buy that <laughs> he didn't even yeah. say he wasn't there uh -huh. nothing yeah. like nobody said anything it just labeled darling and I'm yeah. like Here's my hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shut up and take my money. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I mean, that process makes sense of like, and, and we follow a similar process. I of, promise I didn't know he had a book named Darling when I said that. He has a book that just came out named Darling. It's like his, all of his like yeah. iconic images. It's actually a really good book. Yeah. That's fantastic. So we started with that and we were like, okay, it's great. You know, every spread needs to be a story from the day. So it yeah. makes it harder for the client to say no to it. Right. Um, and so we took that concept and initially we had ran with it. We we're like, okay, you buy a 30 page book, we're going to pre-design it and show it to you. And then we design a 60 page book and like, okay, either you like it or we delete it. I mean, it, it pissed people off. You know, yeah. we had clients of like, wait, I, so I've already paid this money for the album and now I got to pay more, kind of what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. So we took it to a, a little bit of a different level. And, you know, now we, we, we have a worksheet that we'll talk about in a minute, but, um, you know, we, you have to let your clients know, and this is leading into tip number two, is to let your clients know from get go that most albums are going to be more than 30 pages and prepare to invest more in the album. Yeah. That way they know, okay, every album we show, and we've talked about this in the last segment, is you have to show what you want to sell. So every album in our studio that is displayed is 50, 60, 70 pages. Absolutely, so when you're coming yeah. in looking at them, they can't imagine a 30 page album. And so we, we tell them, everything you know we don't know how your wedding's going to be we don't know what's going to be there i can't tell you how big your album is but yeah. 30 is a starting point and then from there you know we can talk about it and build it up and you know we just keep dropping those little nuggets along the way well and tip number two touches back on episode one yeah. touch points and yes. in not only showing what you want to sell but then touching on it several times again mm -hmm. check out episode one because it was absolutely mind-blowing you guys are going to love it um but you guys would not only show what you want to sell in terms of the size of the album, mm -hmm. but then and the and the design and so forth. But then you're also touching on it and communicating it At every five time to them. seven to ten times before it gets to the point of 
what would you like to purchase? So that's very prepared subtly. in their heads. Yeah. And it's very subtle. You know, mm -hmm. every time a client comes in, maybe they come in for their engagement session to uh, pick up their prints or their book or something from their engagement session. Oh, I want you to check out this new album we got in. It's yeah. absolutely amazing. Here, take a look at it. It was at Country Club of Landfall. Yeah. I believe that's where your wedding's going to be, right? Yeah, look at this album. And now they're flipping through this album that's 60 pages. And so they're imagining that being their wedding, even though they may not have an album yet, but it's that subliminal selling of like, yeah. oh, I kind of want an album. You know, and so we just keep dropping those little nuggets along the way. No high pressure sales. You know, we're not. I'm not good at that. Lori's not good at it. Um, and so it kind of helps. It's just not our style. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think you know, with if you're working with a higher end clientele, they don't want to be sold to. They, sure. they just want to know what their options are, and they want to be able to make mm -hmm. the purchases that they want. Absolutely. Um, but I think you touched on something really important: is that. Um, we talk about albums whether or not they've purchased one because mm -hmm. that's planting the seed for possibly a future sale. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. And something that we, we've done once or twice is have a, a product launch party, you know, similar to what um, this is, is have a product launch party. It doesn't have to be a new product. It mm -hmm. can be the same product we had last year, but last year's clients haven't seen it. This year's mm -hmm. clients haven't seen it. And so it again gets onto that show what you sell type of thing. So. Absolutely. And this brings us to tip number three, which is the checklist. Yes. And I want to know about the checklist because I'm not... I'm, I'm going to let Lori talk about that because she created it. Yeah. So the checklist was kind of my brainchild. Um, I had a light bulb moment one day where, you know, we, we were having this problem of we tell our clients that albums start at 30 pages and we tell them that their album is probably going to be bigger, but they didn't necessarily understand why. They're mm -hmm. like, well, why can't you just fit mine in 30 pages? Like, I don't want to, I don't want a bigger album. I think 30 is fine. And I realized it's because they didn't know what they were missing. Mm -hmm. And that's the advantage that pre-design has is if you show them a 60 page album, they know what they're missing, sure. but it can also kind of blindside them. Yeah. And I kind of realized that while Jeff and I don't really use templates in how we design our album, we do have sort of a flow that we follow. Mm -hmm. um, random side note, we do use an album design software called Fundy. Fundy. It and is mm. awesome. They make really good software. Yes, it makes awesome. album design super simple and it really does help our process a lot. Um, but all of that aside, we don't have like a pre-designed template of this image goes here, that image goes there, and you move on. Sure. Um, <laughs> But what we do is we have a very storytelling method of, you know, each spread is a different story from the day. So we might have a spread of the bride's details. Then you turn the page and now it's a spread of the bride getting ready. And then you turn the page and now it's a spread of the bride getting into her gown. So each spread, it's like you could summarize what's happening on that spread mm -hmm. almost as if it were an outline. Mm -hmm. And then the light bulb went off and I'm like, we know what these spreads are. We design it like an outline in our head before we sit down and design it. All we have to do is share that process with our clients. So I created a worksheet that has all of these different spread possibilities, bride details, bride getting ready, bride getting into gown, groomsmen getting ready, and so forth. And not every wedding is gonna have all of those spreads, um, but we just came up with every possible spread that we've ever designed in the past sure. and put a little checkbox next to it and a blank line. So we tell our clients, you know, not to worry about picking out images. They don't have to do that. You know, we're going to walk them through the whole process. And we tell them that their image, that their wedding album will probably be bigger. But like, mm -hmm. like Jeff said, until we've photographed the wedding, we, we don't know. know how big. Mm -hmm. and, and that the way that the process is going to work is that we're going to bring them into the studio, have all their images up on the screen, and I'm going to hold their hand through the whole process. But that they will be calling the shots ultimately on how big the image is. And as soon that. as I tell them that they're in the driver's seat, they instantly relax and they're totally fine with it. Yeah. And so, but we reiterate that, you know, like we said, um, but the, the worksheet itself. So we create this worksheet with little check boxes. What we do is in our sales room, we have a big screen TV and we have Lightroom pulled up with mm -hmm. all of their images. And if we're talking about, you know, bride's details, for example, I will move to that part of the wedding, pull all of those images up in survey mode, mm -hmm. which is n on your yep, keyboard yep. um so you you can show just those and all the rest of them go away mm -hmm. and by the way i like how you mentioned the shortcut like <laughs> yeah. as if i'm teaching a lightroom video right now you're like <laughs> well you know what i, I wasn't entirely <laughs> yeah. sure that it was called survey mode i just know that i hit it is n. survey like mode and it is yeah. n. <laughs> and then and then you hit it's the l in my yeah. brain to hit n and, and then, then hit l, l for lights out, lights out. Yeah. And now, yeah. yeah so um yeah so i use lightroom and i love it um but anyway so we pull them up in survey mode and you know, black out everything else. And then we talk about the images and we say, wow, you know, you guys had a lot of details, um, maybe more than most of our clients. So, you know, most of our clients do one spread, but I feel like based on these images, we might need two spreads to cover it all. What do you guys think about mm -hmm. that? And they say, okay, yeah, sure. 
or you know it might go the other way and I'm, I'm always very honest and very transparent I say you know what most of our clients do you know um, father-daughter dance and mother-son dance on sure. two separate spreads um, but your dances were kind of short and I think we really have like one amazing image from each of those we can probably combine those on a spread and save yeah. you a spread there and then they really appreciate out like you're not trying the honesty. to yeah. we'll always yeah. get them up exactly. to and they're like spread. yeah that sounds good let's just do one spread there um, so by the time we've gone through the checklist we've checked off all the spreads they want in the album and tallied up all the numbers and you know almost every time it's more than 30 mm -hmm. so at this point this is sort of you know the big close or what have you but I say okay based on everything that we've designed your albums now at 58 pages um, our extra spreads are you know X number of dollars mm -hmm. and so your total you know for your add-ons today is this much um, we also work in some upgrades based on how many extra spreads they buy. And I say, so that got you a couple of cover upgrades and this and that. Or I say, you know, you're at 58. If you had one more spread, you're at 60. That gets you to the next upgrade. That so goes I'm, back to kind of our pricing stuff yeah. that we talked yeah. about getting in episode yeah. one. So, right. so, um, the, so all throughout this process, I'm, I'm letting them know, here's where you're at. So there are no surprises. They're not blindsided at the end. I don't just yeah. secretly hand them a bill, you know. Um, so we bring this up and we talk about it and we say, hey, do you want to go up to 60 and get that extra cover upgrade? Or, you know, have we gone by past your budget a little bit? Do we need to pull it back down? And so it's a collaborative process where they're ultimately in charge. Um, and sometimes they take out spreads and sometimes they add more on. But the idea is by the end of it, they never felt like I was doing a hard sell. Yeah. They were always the one calling the shots ultimately as far as whether or not to add or take out. Um, so by the time they're done, they're still at the 60 page album that we probably would have pre-designed them, but they made the decision to add the spreads rather than us. And they're excited about it and they're hugging us on the way out the door and they're like, this is so amazing. I can't wait to see yeah. my album. Yeah. Um, so their attitude is completely yeah. different than when we designed it. And, and then here. from there, a lot of times what we'll do is we will pre-design it from there. Um, you know, it's, and at that point it's not really a pre-design because we've already walked through You're the layout of it, and, but we use yeah. that worksheet to design the album. And sometimes it, you know, it goes both ways. Like Gloria was saying, sometimes when we design it, you know, we lay it out and, and I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know what? It just, I ended <clears throat> at 58 pages instead of 60 because I was able to do this, this, and this and mm -hmm. clients love it. And they're like, great, fantastic. And if I do ever do that and I'll tell them, you know, if, you know, you had pre-designed 60. I found a way to make it work and look better at 58. So I'm going to go ahead and give you that free cover upgrade anyway. Mm. So it earns their trust a little bit more. Uh, sometimes it goes the other way around. I can't get it. You know, maybe because the way we talked about, you know, setting yeah. out the spreads, it just didn't look good visually. And so I might go over one. And at that point, if they've already spent 1500 on the album as a minimum, and now they've doubled the page spread and they've gotten cover upgrades, yeah. they're already a, a $3,500 or $4,000 album. If I go over that spread or two, I'm not like, oh, well, I went over the spread or two. It's an extra X dollars. I'm like, you know what? Don't worry about it. I love the way yeah. it looks. I think it looks good. We're just going to roll with it. And they appreciate that as well. That's so. kind of having it, their best interest at heart. Exactly. Giving them their yeah. pickles, right? Yeah. Like that's yeah. the term. Exactly. Giving yeah. them pickles. <laughs> yeah. And I think they, they realize at that point that it really is about the art of the album rather than about a sales process Absolutely. for us. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Well, you guys have fantastic insight. And this has been hopefully for you all, an amazing episode on album creation and kind of that overall process. Again, when you guys were talking about this in Vegas, I thought we got yeah. to have them come on the show and actually talk about these things. Um, once again, they're going to be teaching at Shutterfest, Salsa and Cottage Shutterfest. That's coming up in May? April. April, April, April. 7th and 8th mm -hmm. in okay. St. Louis. So we're going to have links to that. Be sure to check that out. And you can check out more of their work as well, which is, by the way, fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Pi, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you.